everybody welcome back to my channel for today's video we are going to be doing a timeline of the pretty little liars books i recently did a video talking about the differences between the books and the tv shows and a lot of you wanted an overall timeline of the books so i sat down and i got to work I was booked and I was busy. I did it. <laughs> I said in that video that the books are split into like four different arcs and there's kind of four books in each different arc. There are four arcs in the book series and we are going to do four parts of this timeline series regarding each arc of the books because I feel like that's the best way to approach it rather than shove all of them into one video i've got a little powerpoint presentation regarding the timeline we're gonna go through it obviously the characters in the books and the characters in the tv show are not the same in terms of looks and etc however i've decided to use pictures from the tv show to align with the books you'll see you'll see it probably you'll see to get my point across and to really get you to imagine what's happening in the books do you know what i mean there was quite a lot of similarities in the the first kind of set of books uh when you compare it to the tv show um there was obviously a few differences but the overall ideas are still there do you know what i'm trying to say um like i said um Pretty Little Liars is a series of books that first debuted, 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 debuted in 2006 um, and were written by Sarah Shepard. Uh, so these are all the books. And like I said, they're split into arcs. So we're going to cover the first four. Now, however, however, everybody on this list, you would notice the first book, the what color is that? Are we going to go with teal? Mean. whatever that means that is called Alison's Pretty Little Liars and we're not covering that I think it's pretty much a prequel um we're not covering that okay, we're not covering that Sarah Shepard debuted in 2006 the novels were loosely around her experiences of growing up in Philadelphia in the suburbs thank god she did not have an A person of her own could you imagine could you imagine I'm imagining it. After the success of the first book, that kind of plummeted into the the rest of the series. And obviously, as we know, um, the books were adapt, ad, ad, adapted into the show that we all know and we all love. There's a car alarm going off outside. Can you please turn it off? Hello? Oh! It turns off. Like I said, the books are split into four arcs. The car alarm is going off again. Like I said, the books are split into four arcs. Arc one, which we're going to cover today, uh, is Pretty Little Liars, Flawless, Perfect, Unbelievable. And then the rest we will cover when, when, we, when, when, when we cover them. When we cover them. This is the first book pretty little liars i really like the covers of these books because they're essentially the girls as dolls in this book it starts before the summer of eighth grade and alison de Laurentiis goes missing at a slumber party um and was never found obviously this is the tv show as well um allison doesn't have a human face in this book i'm pretty sure i couldn't find one anywhere so this is just her as a doll all four of the girls emily hannah and spencer go their separate ways once allison has disappeared very similar to the, to the tv shows um they all have their own thing afterwards and they all kind of grieve her in in their own way but they're also kind of relieved that she's no longer alive because Alison carried all of their secrets um so there's a part of them that's a bit relieved about it all um but Alison's family actually move away the the police kind of eventually like the case kind of goes cold and the police kind of stop the investigation 
once you know there's no real leads on on the case in terms of the characters i think we should talk about what the characters look like in the books um because obviously we know the tv show characters and we know what they look like but there's a few changes in regards to the character looks in the show in the book sorry and i think for one of the characters it's so much more important to highlight the differences in looks uh, than the others and uh, that is Emily who was starting with first. Emily in the books is uh, obviously a white person, um, ginger hair and obviously compared to the TV show this is a totally different situation and in the um, TV show Emily is a person of colour and I highlight that because because the topic of race comes up in the books. Um, I'm just going to highlight that now um because it does become a prominent thing um especially in like the first arc of the book then we move on to spencer this is what spencer looks like in the books obviously very different to the show as well more i find it interesting in the books spencer's the one who looks the most similar to allison i find that really interesting because in the tv show that was more a hannah thing and Hannah was highlighted multiple times uh, of kind of looking more like um, Alison. Um, but in the books, it is Spencer who looks the closest to Alison. Then we have Hannah. Obviously, she looks very different to the Hannah that we know from the TV show. Then we have Aria. Aria, uh, her hair color is a bit different in the books compared to uh, the TV show. But I feel like the overall story style is kind of still still there do you know what i mean we start off quite similar to the tv show um emily's mum uh convinces emily to go to the new neighbor's house and to deliver them a basket of goods emily is kind of shocked to see allison's stuff kind of laying just on the side of the road because a new family has moved into the De Laurentiis house. So soon after, a teenager comes out and introduces herself um, as Maya. And she says that she'll be going to the same school as Emily. Uh, they should be friends. Maya invites Emily up to her room and Maya tells her about her life in California and the boyfriend that she left behind. Emily doesn't really tell Maya about Allison's disappearance too much she says that she grew apart from her middle school friends and they all kind of went their own separate ways maya offers emily a little puff on a little you know and um emily accepts it and she's choking on the smoke or whatever um and as she does this she notices a scar on maya's wrist um but before she can ask about anything she hears a bunch of noise and maya's like oh there's like construction work going on like it's nothing really aria aria and her family moved back from a two-year stay in iceland where her dad was working on a tv documentary one thing about this aria really enjoyed her life in iceland compared to rosewood she really enjoyed kind of the freedom of it all and I guess being away from like the whole Allison thing uh, would have been really good for her mentally um, because it was obviously a very toxic situation. So yeah, she really enjoyed that life. She said that she grew up quite quickly in Iceland and she fell in love a lot of times and she just traveled a lot and she really, really enjoyed that. Arya's mom asked her to, if she can drive her brother to lacrosse practice so she does and when she's there she remembers that there's a bar nearby she gets quite bored so she goes to the bar the the guy who works at the bar doesn't really ask her for I, her id he kind of hesitates and is like mm -hmm. but he just like gives her the alcohol that she orders anyway then she meets a guy at the bar and they get talking right we know who this is everybody let's not act shocked okay clap if you care the two talk about iceland and um he introduces himself as ezra we know who this man is he says that he just graduated um doing english and that he's going to teach and she assumes that she, uh, he's teaching a college class so push comes to shove they end up making out in the bathroom of the bar um okay 
whatever that means. So I've put here a jail list. This is a list as we go through the books of the people who should be in jail. Obviously, first on the list is Ezra Fitz. Now, okay, fair enough. At this point, he doesn't know who Arya is or her age. But nonetheless, he shall be going on the jail list for being with a minor. Then we move on to Hannah. So Hannah, um, since Alison's disappearance, was had a bit of a glow up. She becomes friends with Mona. And her and Mona kind of come up with a plan to have this glow up. They're going to be beautiful. They're already beautiful. We Come on come on now they have this glow up they become popular etc etc very similar to the tv show we see them first in the books when hannah decides to steal from tiffany's spencer spencer we are introduced um she is very much living in her sister's shadow her sister melissa her parents always favor melissa over spencer uh melissa and her new boyfriend ren um uh her parents are kind of throwing them a celebra celebratory dinner because melissa has just graduated with a business degree and she's been accepted into a business school straight off the bat there's the competition between spencer and melissa um through the books and that's highlighted quite a lot so her parents let ren and melissa move into the renovated barn that's in their back garden kind of this where the slumber party happened where alice went missing spencer's like girl excuse me um hold on i'm not having this hold on oh that's no. in the sense that no you know what i mean like because spencer was promised um the barn by her parents um to stay in but um it's given to melissa and Ren kind of like straight off the bat so spencer excuses herself from the table and leaves the restaurant to go and have a cigarette um i don't know if that's legal at the age that she's at right now but whatever whatever that means but ren comes outside and uh sorry before this spencer was kind of reminiscing about like the only time she got back at melissa which when she was making out with her previous boyfriend which we will come to don't you worry about that so ren comes outside and they share a little bit of a moment they're a bit attracted to each other but the two return to the restaurant before they can like share their feelings you know as they say on the jail list again we have ren ren being with a minor when he's 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 older and with melissa so ren's also on the jail list the jail list ends up quite big actually um but nonetheless, I digress. Aria returned to school and she's very surprised to see Hannah's kind of who Hannah is now. But they don't really reconnect their friendship straight away. The girls don't really get close again until quite later on. They come together here and there through the arcs, obviously. But they don't really reconnect the friendship that they once had type of thing. So that's when Ezra walks in. And they are both very shocked to see each other in the classroom because obviously they had been together. They're very shocked. They're in in or flabbergasted. So then Aria receives a text from A, and A says, "Surprise! Uh, I wonder what your pig puppet will have to say about this." <laughs> I don't know. He A kind of got her there i'm sorry emily has been showing maya kind of around school getting maya to kind of grips with everything and emily decides to walk her home as well and maya says that she's been asked to play guitar in the band and she tries to convince emily to join as well but emily's like i have swim practice i can't like she doesn't have enough free time to be to be doing it in maya's backyard they actually share a little kiss little moment they have a really cute little hesitant but very romantic moment emily then gets a text from a and it says hey em i've been replaced you found another friend to kiss oh <gasps> spencer returns from field practice and she's a bit rusty she's a bit tension you needs a massage so she gets into the hot tub but then ren comes out uh, just in his boxers um and decides to get into the hot tub with her 
whatever that means then he offers her a massage and she agrees um but then spencer's kind of like no like before melissa comes back like we gotta break this up so then once again ren is on the jail list again okay we we are probably how many minutes in i don't know and he's on the jail list twice so um yeah okay then spencer gets a text and it says covert is an easy one when you covert someone they desire and lust after it usually it's someone they can't have you always had the problem though haven't you a kind of got her i don't know god then we got these two men i will say everybody wilden in the books is less annoying you know he's not as annoying as he is in the tv show so i will cut him some slack hannah is quite upset when her boyfriend sean has taken a virginity pledge because she feels worthless and it kind of takes her back to her dad and her dad left her mom and her to start a new family with isabel uh his new partner and the uh, her daughter kate hannah and allison met isabel and kate together before allison obviously went missing hannah's dad humiliated her by making a comment about her weight um so anyway hannah's knocked out of her thoughts by a detective turning up he arrests her for shoplifting at tiffany's because cctv had caught her doing it ashley tells wilden that hannah did it out of spite because they had an argument and it was more just from anger um but then she gets a text from a which says hey hannah since prison food makes you fat you know what sean's going to say not it this a is a nasty piece of work i'm sorry so byron senses some tension with aria and he assumes that it is because aria had seen him having an affair with one of his previous students called meredith um aria is convinced that the reason they went to iceland was because of the affair and he wanted to kind of cover it up but uh she never really spoke to anyone about it later on aria at the school tries to convince ezra to keep the relationship going but ezra kind of refuses but anyway on the jail list we have a new name byron oh and uh, i forgot to say ren is on the jail list again twice because nasty piece of work yeah byron is now on the list as well so we you know we're getting quite a few people involved you know anyway maya convinces emily to skip swim practice and they go swimming by like this like cliff thing um and maya says she doesn't know how she feels about her ex-boyfriend that she left in california um but she also doesn't know how she feels about her sexuality um and her feelings towards girls but before emily can respond um a bunch of students kind of come along and she gets quite spooked and she runs off spencer gets really good sat results and she can't wait to tell her family so she tries to tell them once but melissa kind of interrupts the conversation with her own thing so then she tells them at a family dinner so the way it went everybody had to say during the day something that went well for them and spencer's almost forgotten um, but Ren kind of brings her back into the conversation and Spencer shares her results to her parents. And to reward her, they give her the barn and make Ren and Melissa share the rest of the bedrooms that are in the house. So the relationship between the families, uh, kind of like the TV show, especially with um, Spencer's family, very competitive. They like to one-up each other and they only reward things that are... Okay, this sounds weird. Only reward things that are good. But in terms of like, you have to be good all the time if you want good things. Do you know what I mean? So Arya tries to impress Ezra with one of her kind of school reports that she hands in. But she actually gets a text from A saying, maybe he fools around with students all the time. A lot of teachers do. Just ask your dad. So obviously at this stage, the girl's like, hmm. Because Alison is the only one that kind of knew these scenes secrets the girls don't know each other are getting the text as well they just think it's individuals at this kind of moment in time but obviously allison knew all the secrets so everyone's like mm. interesting interesting so this is like i said before when the topic of race comes up in the books emily's mum discovers that she's been skipping swimming practice and emily says that her heart isn't really in it anymore emily's mum thinks that maya is a bad influence on her because her family are black 
This is a really interesting difference between the TV show and the books in terms of like, because obviously in the books, Emily's family are people of colour. And um, so therefore, to read this perspective from the books, was it a really interesting kind of standpoint in terms of like, why did uh, that change take place? Was it for a specific reason or et cetera, et cetera? Because I think it's quite an interesting topic to portray, especially during the times of when the show was being made and aired. But also it's interesting to see the TV show's perspective and how it takes a much more different route. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, But yeah, that's like one of the big differences between the TV show and the books. Although her parents want to ground her for skipping swimming practice, they allow her to go to uh, Ben... No, Noel Khan's party with her boyfriend, Ben, because they hope that he will convince her to kind of get back on the swim team. Emily and Arya actually kind of reunite at the party and um, they kind of speak a little bit about Alison's disappearance, but before they can really talk about it, Maya appears. So Emily and Maya head towards a photo booth and in the photo booth, Emily confides in Maya that Emily wants to kiss Alison and gave her a love letter, but Alison kind of never showed that reciprocation back type of thing but then emily and maya end up making out in the photo booth however compared to the tv show emily's boyfriend ben actually kind of walks in on them doing it and gets really mad and throws a cup of beer at them and storms away aria drives her brother to the party but she gets quite bored so Ezra ends up surprising her by calling her cell phone to ask her to come over to his house okay whatever that means Arya goes there and they end up making out um but then after um Ezra goes to the bathroom and Arya gets a text from a that's some kind of extra credit love ya p.s i wonder what your mum would think if she found out about your dad's little uh study buddy and that you knew a but once again uh, ezra is back on the jail list he appears one t- two times already so my question is really prison plus ezra equals when don't worry don't worry because it will be so normal spencer doesn't end up going to noel khan's party obviously at this point she's in the barn she's kind of living in the barn ren comes over when melissa is sleeping and they end up making out after it ren goes to the bathroom and spencer gets a text from a saying i already told you kissing your sister's boyfriend is wrong so once again on the jail list we have ren again ren at the moment is actually beating ezra for being on the prison list because he's on there one two three times so there's some stiff competition going on (laughs) however melissa actually catches them in the act and her parents end up kicking ren out of the house and then they turn the barn into kind of like a pottery studio for um spencer's mum instead guess that relationship's done and dusted but it's not hannah then tries to seduce sean at noel khan's party but sean is not having it no he's not having it but she gets quite mad and ends up um finding the key to his um i think it's i think it's his dad's car and her and mona drive to a convenience store her and mona end up actually crashing the car and they both abandon the car however the next morning wilden arrests hannah for crashing the car however before wilden can really sort that situation out he's called away to another um much more bigger thing so emily decides to go on a bike ride to kind of get some fresh air and kind of clear her thoughts up about maya however she gets a note from a which is allison's the love letter between allison and emily um and a says i thought you might want this back love a so desperate for answers emily kind of cycles to aria's house and they have a conversation they're both kind of scared to admit that they're getting text messages from a, because obviously the messages hold some of their darkest secrets and they don't want anyone knowing that so um they end up hearing sirens in the distance so emily cycles to maya's house 
um, and they see the place surrounded with, you know, ambulances and police and etc. I don't know what they're called. The people that like collect, like the bodies i don't know what they're called workers who were renovating the backyard of the previous de Laurentiis house have now found allison's body i've also started a death list so on the death list so far we have allison okay and trust me it will get bigger aria flees to ezra's house after they discover the news of Allison's body being found. However, Ezra is furious at her because he's found the text messages from A. He, he thinks that she's playing some kind of game. Spencer doesn't really have anyone to talk to about the Allison thing because of her affair with Ren. However, Ren comes back and wants to keep the relationship going and promises to kind of be there for her. Hannah is um, home alone watching the news and there's a part in the book where it discusses is something that we are told is the Jenna thing. We're not told what it is yet, but it's something that kind of alludes to a big incident that happened with Jenna. Obviously, if you've watched the show or read the books, you know what it is. But yeah, it alludes to the Jenna thing. When Hannah is watching the news, she sees her mum and Detective Wilden coming into the house, having a makeup session, going upstairs because Hannah figures that's how uh, she got off all of kind of the crimes that she's been arrested for so far. So yeah, I just personally think Ashley should be with me instead, wasting her time on Wilden. Fair enough, Wilden is not the same person he is in the TV show, but like be with me. Actually, Ashley's not the same mum that she is in the TV show. So I'm not really Ashley's number one fan in the books but um tv show ashley i'm free anytime i'm free mostly i'm free during weekends but you can call me anytime my love and i'll be there the girls are reunited at allison's funeral and they all kind of reminisce about the past but then they turn around and they see jenna and they're like oh oh that is not oh that's not. in the sense that and they're like oh what if the whole jenna thing comes out now they all then simultaneously get a text from a and obviously it's the iconic i'm still here bitches and i know everything a gaggery i love it i love it let's do it again okay then we move on to book number two which is called flawless the the book opens up with a flashback of all of the girls the girls are kind of dressing up giving each other makeovers etc but allison spots toby kind of watching them in a really creepy way so toby is another big difference between the book and a tv show toby compared to the TV show in the books is very creepy and he's the one who is the issue and he um, will will cover it a bit later on but he does something to Jenna which is really gross and vile and yeah in the books he's really really not a good guy compared to the tv show um so let i'm just thought i would highlight that now allison kind of makes a plan to get back at toby because toby is like spying on the girls he's being really creepy towards them i'm gonna read this word for word so i get this plan completely right so allison wants to steal one of the bottle rockets he keeps at the base of a uh, of his tree house to shoot it into the window to scare him the other girls don't think it's a good idea they're like oh that is not oh that's not. in the sense that no you know what i mean but allison goes ahead with it anyway the liars watch as allison steals a bottle rocket and then backs away from the treehouse so she can aim it through the window they hear a loud explosion and see sparks in the treehouse soon the tree is on fire allison runs back to her friends and tells them it wasn't her fault where when the fire department arrives spencer tries to tell them what happened but allison kind of pulls her back and like stops her from telling them what actually happened so the other liars watch from the window as the paramedic carries someone from the tree house now the girls all obviously think it's going to be toby because the plan was to get back at toby however the person they're carrying from the tree house is actually jenna then allison convinces the girls not to say anything because toby will most likely be arrested for it and that next morning the girls are shocked because toby actually confesses to 
doing it. So this is the Jenna thing. Jenna is blinded and sent to kind of like a special school. And then Toby is sent away to like a rehab place kind of thing and then Alison makes bracelets for the girls which kind of ties them together within this kind of Jenna thing now we go back to the funeral and the girls are quite shocked to see Jenna and Toby they're quite taken aback and they're quite scared that the whole Jenna thing situation might come out into something that they kind of participated in. The girls arranged to meet up at kind of like the local park to talk about everything. When Spencer heads to the meeting, she remembers something else from the night of the Jenna thing. When Spencer and Allison were outside, Toby ran up to them claiming Allison was the one who had done it. Allison then threatened Toby and said what Toby was doing to Jenna and what she saw, she would tell everyone about it. So obviously we're like, okay, what did he do? Alison kind of forced Toby into confessing to doing it because Spencer was very scared that Toby would tell the police actually what had happened. But obviously Alison had forced Toby into confessing and Toby um, told Alison that one day he'll get back at her for it. So Spencer is now convinced that um, Toby killed Alison and could potentially be A. The friends meet at this local park and they all admit that they're getting texts from this mysterious person however they don't reveal kind of what the texts say because obviously the texts are kind of their secrets and they don't want that getting out so they're like oh that is not spencer kind of says that toby could be a but doesn't really say why and doesn't kind of refer to the jenna thing situation that was going on so as spencer is driving home she gets another text from a which says spence i don't blame you for not telling them about our little secret about toby the truth can be dangerous and you don't want them getting hurt do you <gasps> dun 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 mona offers hannah a lift home and mona's a bit like you're acting really weird like what's kind of going on but hannah kind of shrugs it off because hannah hasn't told mona about breaking up with sean or being arrested for crashing his car or the texts from a. Mona wonders who they are going to take to Foxy which is like an annual charity ball but Hannah says that she doesn't think she's going to go because obviously she's not with Sean anymore but then when Hannah arrives home she actually sees her dad standing there because uh, of the whole Sean car situation and he says although the family aren't pressing charges they want Hannah to work at her parent at his parents rehabilitation clinic to kind of work off what she kind of owes type of thing on the jail list everybody as a reminder we have ezra ren run again byron ezra again run again and i've decided to put tom here i don't like him i really don't like him he only shows up when he kind of wants to have a little dig at hannah he's a very terrible dad as well so i've decided yeah, I've taken the democratic vote here, everybody. I'm going to put Tom on the jail list. If we have any obligations, please speak now. Okay, next one. So, so Emily and Maya are making out in Emily's room while her parents are away. And Maya asks Emily if uh, she will be her date to foxy and she goes into the bathroom because she's kind of like i don't know because she's kind of combating her feelings at this point so she doesn't really have an answer straight away and she gets a text from a and the text says um still enjoying the same kind of activities with your best friends i see even though most of us have totally changed it's nice to know you're still the same I'm gonna tell everyone about your new love or shall i xoxo gossip girl sorry that's the wrong tv show aria arrives home to her parents arguing so she decides to take uh her and herself and mike to a bar but when they get there meredith is there and like mike gets quite angry and storms off so that's a whole oh that is not jail list again i've added byron because of this whole relationship i thought why not let's add him again because at the end of the day he's a creep so um anyway moving on everybody but spencer can't really stop thinking about the fact that toby could be a and she recalls a time after the jenna thing where they were both on a train um and she saw toby and toby kind of glared at her and then like a week later allison went missing so she's a bit like she's just thinking about it so then she gets a 
text from Ren, which kind of reassures her because at this stage, she doesn't really have anyone in her life to talk to. Her parents haven't spoken to her because of the whole Ren thing. Same with Melissa. And she doesn't really have anyone to talk to about the Allison. You know, they just found her best friend dead. Do you know what I mean? Emily's swim coach kind of convinces her to come back to the swimming team and that she will be captain. She doesn't really want to because she's scared that she'll um, see Ben again. She doesn't want to see Ben, her boyfriend, well ex-boyfriend now girl but she comes back and she runs into ben again she tells ben that it was just like a mistake and like it it didn't mean anything and ben's like prove it so he pushes her up against a wall and kind of pushes himself onto her gross gross man toby kind of comes and pushes him off her and kind of saves her from that situation on the jail list i have added ben to this situation because who does he think he is what are you doing not not in this household. Arya takes the long way home from school, just taking time to think about everything that, that had happened. And she ends up breaking down in kind of like a deserted area and she doesn't have her phone on her. So she goes in search for someone's, you know, someone to use their phone. So Sean actually pulls up to see Arya um, and offers her a ride home. And she has a bit of a panic attack. And he kind of helps her kind of breathe it out. And like everything was fine. And then she confesses to him about her father's affair. And he kind of promises not to tell anyone about it. As you can see by this amazing graphic. I'm a graphic designer. I didn't actually make this. Um, Whatever. Spencer's parents have actually cancelled her credit cards. After the whole Ren situation. So she spends the night at Ren's house. And she actually loses her virginity to him so he's on the jail list again everybody the next day melissa kind of tries to have some peace between them um she d- spencer doesn't say anything about the virginity thing just yet but then a boy from school called andrew uh, spencer would like the notes for the pre the classes that spencer has missed so to hide her relationship with ren um spencer takes this opportunity but hannah attends kind of like the virginity club meetings to try and get sean back and win him back so she apologizes to sean about everything and at first he acts quite cold towards her but then he kind of warms her a bit more so hannah feels like she has a chance to kind of get him back um after everything that had happened so toby kind of rescues emily again when emily falls off her bike um and they end up kind of talking about everything and emily toby and emily talk about the swim meet and emily is surprised that toby seems to be experiencing the same feelings of not fitting in when she does and the two share a kiss interesting when they return to the swim meet emily gets a message from a with the photo of her is it (laughs) two sorry a threatens her with the picture of her and maya kissing and says that they're gonna spread it uh if she doesn't do what they say but hannah and her father try to kind of repair their relationship they discuss the wedding um that her dad's gonna have to isabel as a kind of try to repair their relationship they are gonna go and take a trip to philadelphia and stay in a nice hotel and kind of repair what they have however hannah receives a text from a saying four simple words hannah Marin blinded jenna what would daddy think if he knew that i'm watching you hannah and you better do as i say Maya confronts Emily about Emily avoiding her and Emily kind of confesses that she didn't quit this uh the swim team she is attracted to Toby and she's going to take Toby to Foxy and Maya is obviously like oh that is not like she tells Emily that she can't keep hiding who she is Um, And she's very hurt by what Emily has done. Ren and Spencer continue their relationship whatever that means ren is again on the jail list again how many times one two three four times now ren you're giving ezra some stiff competition like come on now spencer needs to hand an essay in and she sees melissa's and she kind of gets inspiration to kind of just copy and steal it so she gets a message from a saying want the essay i think you know where to find it so a is kind of encouraging spencer to do this not gonna lie i don't know why 
Spencer would end up doing it if A is kind of encouraging it because she, like she knows that A will then have something to hold her to. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So I don't really understand why Spencer would actually end up going ahead with it, you know, but whatever that means. So A has warned Arya to tell her mom about the affair. A has also directed her to check out the yoga studio where her where Meredith works. Arya plans on taking a private class with her so she can talk about the affair, but is spooked when Spencer, Elo Spencer, also arrives at the yoga studio. Oh, that is not. But Sean then calls Arya to ask Arya if she wants to go out. So the two drive to a discreet location on a hill and they end up talking. Sean asks Arya to go to Foxy with him and she agrees. Although at this point she's not sure whether they're going as friends or if they're going as a couple, as a date type of thing. As, as these people say nowadays. Arya admits to him that she went to Meredith's yoga studio to talk about her to talk to her sorry but didn't go through with it sean offers to drive her to meredith's house so when meredith when aria confronts meredith she asks meredith to stop like the affair that's going on but meredith admits that she knows she's hurting uh his family but that she and aria's father are in love and won't stop seeing each other interesting because byron's going to jail my love if you don't stop this do you know what i mean you know what I mean? But Hannah spends her Friday sitting in the bleachers during a soccer, soccer game. A soccer game. It's football every good day. I'm very sorry to say that. Anyway, but she keeps thinking about A's identity and she's very worried about it. But Sean and Hannah both talk to each other and say they're both not going to Fox. Say, Sean, why are you lying for? Why are you lying for? Why are you lying? But Sean says that they should go out sometime just to talk about how everything ended between them. Uh, A then tells Hannah, tell the girls that she tried to seduce Sean at a party and that she forces herself to throw up several times a day. If she doesn't do it, A will tell everyone, including Hannah's father, about her involvement with Jenna, the Jenna thing. And she blurts out the words so rapidly, the girls aren't sure what they heard before she runs away. After confronting Meredith, Arya kind of breaks down in Sean's car. But she tries to kind of avoid him here and there, but they end up going to Foxy. And they end up kind of talking about Arya's behavior. Emily attends Foxy with Toby, but she can't help feeling the whole evening she's just gone with the wrong person. A tarot card reader actually approaches her to offer to like read her future but she refuses the reader actually does say though that something is going to happen to emily this night and she must return to the one that she truly loves the most so obviously she thinks about maya ben actually ends up attacking emily again and uh he threatens her and says that he's going to tell everyone about her being a lesbian but then she kind of gets away from him and maya has seen the whole thing and maya's really concerned so ben you're on the jail list again all that rhymes oh my god i'm actually like a poet like it's not even funny nowadays do you know what i mean i'm up there with shakespeare and i'm not even trying to brag like it's just it's my truth do you know what I mean? But Hannah is excited about kind of spending time with her dad. However, Kate and Isabel are also there and she didn't know that. So Hannah's dad tells them about Hannah joining the virgin virginity club and um, working at the rehab center. And Hannah's really appalled by it. She's really embarrassed. So she runs away to the bathroom and she gets a message that um, Sean is at Foxy with another girl. So she really wants to go there. So Kate kind of reassures her that she will cover for her um, and that she can go. Wilden goes to see Spencer to ask more about Allison's disappearance and if, if there's any more information that he's not uh, that Spencer's not sharing. But Spencer obviously made the promise about the Jenna thing, so she decides not to tell Wilden about it and about her suspicions about Toby. So then that night she actually attends the Foxy with Andrew. But she can't really relax because she's not really heard back from Ren in a while and she's really worried about the A situation and what's going on there. Ren finally calls her back uh, and Andrew over here the conversation he runs off learn when he learns that spencer was using him because her family wouldn't like her real boyfriend she follows andrew back to the dance and tries to apologize but before she can find him she spies emily being escorted out by toby 
Spencer fears that Toby has come to get revenge for the the Jenna thing. Hannah confronts uh, Arya and Sean at the Foxy. I think she's so valid here. I'm so sorry. Like she causes a bit of a scene, but like I th I think she's valid in this situation. But she figures out then that A must be at the Foxy. A is someone that they must know and is here right now. She finds uh Spencer and who is it? Spencer and Arya. And she discusses her concerns about who could be A. And they discuss the texts that they've been getting since the funeral. And obviously not kind of what's involved in it, but, you know, things like that. Um, and they all kind of come to the conclusion that uh, Toby is A. They, they panic because they need to find Emily before something bad happens to Emily. So after the whole Ben thing, Emily asks Toby if Toby can take her home. And here she confesses to, to Toby that she has feelings for Maya, but she's really worried that the school will kind of, the people in the school will make fun of her for it and for being gay. I'm going to set the scene, okay? There's a massive storm happening right now and Toby kind of pulls over and Toby kind of confides in her and says kind of, you know, he's bullied by all of the people at school um and he feels very left out and the evening was very hard for him because he was surrounded by the people who kind of bullied him the most emily also kind of comes to the conclusion that toby knows that allison was the one who actually hurt jenna um so she kind of freaks out and she thinks that he's a and she kind of runs away from him but hannah then goes back to her dad however she thinks that kate kind of lied so that she could go to foxy however kate didn't lie for her and told her pair, her mom and uh tom that hannah had left to go to foxy and uh hannah's dad is furious he's like so you left for what do you know what i mean he doesn't even say goodbye to her when hannah leaves so this man is a real menace emily makes it home and emily's parents are actually away for the weekend emily locks all of the doors but toby kind of turns up at her back door and he says that he's he wants to explain but emily says she knows what he did now there's a bit of miscommunication here because toby's done something that we aren't aware of yet but emily thinks he's done something else so toby thinks it's the thing that we don't know yet if that makes any sense emily panics and she grabs a baseball bat in case he comes back to kind of hurt her ren tells spencer that he wants to break up with her because he's been seeing someone else and melissa isn't surprised by this um spencer confides in melissa but she's like girl i'm not shocked because i was with him all weekend and someone had anonymously told melissa that ren was seeing spencer so she kind of gloats that she kind of won him over spencer because obviously there's this whole competition thing that goes on in their family type of thing so she's kind of gloating she's like mm -hmm, girl i got him do you know what i mean hannah wakes up to see wilden kind of in a towel and she's like girl what the hell but then she remembers that like her her mom and wilden are kind of sleeping together hannah tries to convince wilden that toby killed allison however wilden says that he has an alibi for the night allison went missing and he's been cleared already over the police radio he gets an emergency call the call says that another body has been found in town wilden says he won't give her any details about it but hannah kind of comes to the conclusion that it must be emily so she is panicking she's like oh girl oh that is not aria's world then comes crashing down when a tells her mum about the affair that byron had and that aria knew about it byron gets kicked out of the house and aria's mum blames aria for it specifically because she didn't obviously tell her about it spencer then calls aria asking if she's seen anything because there's police surrounding emily's kind of driveway aria spencer and hannah go there and they want to know what's going on so wilden kind of tells them to go away because they're gonna like be involved in the investigation or whatever the girls really want to know what happened because they think that emily is the one that's dead however it's not actually emily that is dead they get really relieved when emily comes out to talk to them and she explains that toby's body was found in the woods nearby and that he committed s word by overdosing on pills spencer tells the girls that toby all 
always knew about the girls being involved in the Jenna thing. But then Hannah says Toby couldn't have killed Allison because he had an alibi for that night. On the death list so far, we've got Allison, we've got Toby. Okay. Yeah, Toby actually dies in the books compared to the TV show where he is a long term character. And we're about to hear from Jenna. Toby was a terrible person. Terrible, terrible person. Jenna arrives and her guide dog leads her over to the girls. She gives Emily a purse that, uh, with a note that Toby had written for her. When Emily said to Toby, I know what you've done, Toby thought it was something that he had done to Jenna instead. Only Alison had known this, but uh, and he took the blame for the Jenna thing to prevent this from getting out. But Toby had actually been um, assaulting Jenna sexually. And I think it's interesting the TV show didn't take this route because the TV show instead made Jenna out to be the creep. So I don't know what the change was there. So they all kind of apologize to Jenna for kind of teasing her back in the day and Jenna kind of forgives them for it. So Spencer finally admits everything she knew about the accident that blinded Jenna. When Ali aimed the bottle rocket at the treehouse window, she saw Toby inside assaulting Jenna. Ali had been so shocked that she had bumped the bottle rocket out of position. Toby chased them and told Ali that he would tell the police what she did, but she blackmailed him with the knowledge that he assaulted his stepsister. So Emily is distraught about everything that's that's happened because she thought she could trust Toby. All of the girls realized that Ali had blackmailed each of them with the secrets she knew about them as well. The girls then leave Emily's house knowing that Toby is not the one who killed Alison or who was actually A because they soon get a text from A saying that nothing is over. Toby is in fact on the jail list because I can't like Toby was horrible in the books and I just can't imagine why the TV show decided to change it and to make Jenna the the creep instead um, because Jenna's not actually bad in the books. So that's interesting. We now move on to book three, which is called Perfect. Book three starts with a flashback um, with all of the girls. And Arya is a filmmaker in the making type of thing. So in this, Alison receives a text and she's really excited about it, but she won't tell the girls who it is. But Alison then leaves the room and Spencer actually mutters that sometimes she just wants to kill Spencer. And the girls kind of agree type of thing. But they try and get into her phone to see who the text was from, but they can't get in to the phone because they don't know the password and Alison comes back before they can do it. Spencer's older sister, Melissa, and her boyfriend, Ian, interrupt the girls. Ian joins the girls on the couch as they pretend to be on a talk show that Arya is filming. Spencer, who has a crush on Ian, asks him what his ultimate graduation present would be. He says it would be base jumping lessons and a friend of his went and said the experience was better than sex. Melissa insists uh, that Ian comes to help her in the kitchen and Arya stops the camera. And then the following weekend... Allison goes missing. Spencer's parents actually insist that she goes to see a therapist because of the Allison situation, but she kind of thinks that they're doing it to talk uh, so she could talk about the Ren situation that's going on. However, when Spencer sees the therapist, she's kind of not that much like she's okay. They've not received messages from A in about three weeks. So she's kind of getting back on track with everything. However, later on, her mom tells her that her essay has been nominated uh, at the Golden Orchid. But obviously this essay was the essay that she had stolen from Melissa. So now she's like, oh, oh, that is not. No, but in the sense that Arya is also facing some struggles because obviously that her, uh, her dad's affair has been exposed. And she's now dating Sean and she's getting a lot of pressure from Hannah because Hannah's like how are you gonna date like my ex and things like that so Ezra gets quite concerned about Arya um, and her mental state so she leaves her car his classroom and she stumbles out of the classroom and Ezra catches her and they have a little bit of a moment on the jail list I'm adding Byron and I'm adding Ezra Hannah and her best friend Mona are kind of sat critiquing outfits that students are wearing and Mona discusses her friend friend friendiversary which is the annual celebration of their friendship and she's also planning her big 17th birthday party in which hannah plays a large role in it against her parents wishes emily continues to see maya they meet and have a little romantic 
session maya tells emily that there's a stalker in town that's like watching people and looking through windows but emily kind of shrugs it off um and maya wants them to be more open about their relationship but emily says that she's not really ready to go public about it yet then in the school parking lot ezra gives aria an essay to read concerning the scarlet letter which is a book that they're reading in class and it's the story of a woman condemned to wear a scarlet letter a on her chest because of her affair with a man when aria receives a text from her father asking if she'll meet with him uh at his college it gives her an idea she asks sean to drop her off at the school then she waltzes into meredith's painting class and paints a red a on meredith's chest before leaving girl aria come on now hannah can't really wait for this friend anniversary thing that mona's got going on however wilden kind of ruins the moment and calls the girls in to like an office to talk about Allison's disappearance and he says the videos of the girls have kind of got released they're kind of investigating it and seeing if that leads to any more news about Allison's disappearance Will then discusses the s note which was left by toby in it he said he'd promised to keep allison's secret if she kept his so wilden is wondering if the girls knew about these secrets and if that could lead to more information about allison's disappearance they obviously won't say about the jenna thing but that's kind of what the secrets are alluding to but then they then get a text from a and bearing in mind none of them had received a text from a in quite a while quite a few weeks but the message says you really thought i was gone put elite i've been watching you this whole time in fact i might be watching you right now and girls if you tell anyone about me you'll be sorry this a is stood on business Mm -hmm. aria returns home and mike is watching the video that got released the video that i explained earlier about ian kind of pretending he's in a talk show type of thing and aria goes to her mom to talk about what she did to meredith by painting the a on her chest because she thought her mom would be really happy about it but her mom is actually really furious about it and she says that the main character in the scarlet letter was actually a sympathetic character so aria kind of leaves the house really upset um, and her mum is furious about it. So Spencer is kind of struggling to remember what happened with Alice in the night that she went missing. She's kind of having flashbacks here and there of things that she saw during the night. She can't exactly picture everything together at once. Um, and there's a fear radiating through her that she might have done something to Alison. But her AP teacher actually announces that she's made kind of the finalist for the Golden Orchid essay thing. Um, so she then, she then receives a text from A, which says, I know exactly what you did, but I won't tell you if you do exactly what I say. Want to know what happens if you don't? Go to Emily's swim meet and you'll see. Emily's relieved because she has set up an appointment to talk to the police about Alison. She wants to get everything off her chest. And her swim coach actually tells her that kind of a university president is there to watch Emily and wants to talk to her about it. So Emily tells her sister about it. But her sister is quite hesitant and she's like, what's going on? So Emily walks out to like the main swimming area and she sees that her pictures of her and Maya kissing have been spread everywhere around the school by A. Aria tries to convince Emily to stay at the swim meet to find out who A is because A must be in the room. But Emily is too humiliated and she runs away. But Sean's parents actually offer Aria a place to stay because she's been kicked out by her mom. So she receives a text from A saying, are you gonna tell Sean about your relationship with Ezra? She then hears several twigs snapping outside. Um, and she sees on the news that there's a stalker going around Rosewood. But then she gets another text from A, which says, P.S. I may be a bitch, but I'm not a murderer. Here's a clue for the clueless. <laughs> I love that. Here's a clue for the clueless. Oh my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. I'm going to use that in my real life. Someone wanted something of Ali's. The killer is closer than you think. Mona isn't returning Hannah's text so Hannah tracks her down and finds her at one of their favorite restaurants. Mona has surrounded herself with psychopaths I think that says. I don't know what I was typing here I'm so sorry. Who she usually makes fun of but are now acting like her friends. When Hannah questions her about it Mona explains that she wants to have an attending court at her birthday party and these girls will be in it as well as Hannah. They troop off to get fitted uh, for their special gowns for the party, but Hannah is left behind because her purse spills open. She gathers up her things and the waiter comes over to help, and the waiter is Lucas. So, Lucas is a boy that used to be considered cool in middle school, but he is now considered a dork. He tells Hannah that Mona left the check for her to pay. Hannah leaves the restaurant and gets a text. 
Um, and A tells her, Dear Hannah, we may not be friends, but we have the same enemies. So here are two tips. One of your friends is hiding something from you, something big, and Mona, she's not your friend either. So watch your back. This is really interesting when we find out who A is because, surprise, um, A is Mona, the first A. So the fact A sent this message is really interesting to me. But Emily's parents are horrified that she, uh, sh- she's gay. So they want to send her to a treetops camp thing, which is like a rehabilitation place um, for gay people and they threaten her that if she doesn't go there and kind of sort herself out okay they'll send her to go live with her aunt in iowa spencer is getting ready for a photo shoot because of her uh orchid essay thing that's going on um and she receives a text from a but melissa comes to tell her that the reporter is ready for her to come but spencer has kind of another memory of allison and like she went missing and them having kind of like an argument about it but the interview with the newspaper went really really well but then she does receive a text from a which says dear miss finalist hey girl hey girl did you see me drunk at that party last night haha <laughs> how you like it if i told your secret right now i can you know and if you don't watch it maybe i will maya tries to convince emily to con- continue their relationship but emily tells her about what her parents said about sending her away so uh, emily meets with becca who is an uh, alum alumni alumni of the treetops program Although Becca seems nice, Emily's confused about how the treetops program works. Becca claims that they help homosexuals to seek the cause of their behavior and how difficult their lives would be if they continue in the lifestyle choice. This doesn't add up in Emily's mind because she knows Maya is happy now that she is out. And there is a lesbian couple that runs a shop nearby who also seem very content. Emily knows that she must try the program and ask if she can go out with Becca and her former girlfriend so she can see how they handle their friendship and Becca agrees. But Spencer's therapist helps Spencer kind of come to the fact come to the terms with the fact that her and Melissa's relationship has been kind of made bad by something that's happened in the past, whether that's her parents showing love to one of them and not the other type of thing. Made Melissa feel jealous that Spencer's parents kind of really loved Spencer as a child more than they did with Melissa. But Spencer's like, mmm maybe it's because i took her (laughs) boyfriend but um spencer is still admitting she's having visions about the night that allison went missing and she doesn't know if she might have accidentally done something to hurt allison but the doctor offers to hypnotize her to see if she can unlock a memory in spencer's mind so spencer remembers fighting with allison the night she disappeared Allison believes Spencer had read her diary. She also said Spencer wanted to steal something from her. Spencer denied the accusation but remembered shoving Allison. Allison yells another accusation but Spencer can't hear the words. She wakes out of the memory and the doctor helps to kind of calm her down about it. Um, But when Spencer gathers her thoughts in the parking lot, she sees a shadowy figure spying on her from across the street. So this is kind of like when Emily got hypnotized in the show as well um that was really interesting hannah tries to make up with mona by making her a really nice birthday note but someone changes the birthday note and it kind of humiliates mona so mona gets back at her and tells everyone about her bulimia but also about how she got arrested for shoplifting so hannah accidentally goes into the boys bathroom and cries but lucas is there to kind of offer her a shoulder to kind of cry on and kind of be there for her on her way back to class hannah finds a note from a which says remember when you saw mona leaving the bill beach plastic surgery clinic hello lipo but shush you didn't hear it from me aria goes to ezra's office to ask for an extension on one of the essays and she kind of breaks down and tells her every tells him everything that's going on with her family ezra sympathizes because he also saw his mother kiss a doctor that obviously wasn't uh, his dad. Um, And the two end up making out quite passionately, um, but they do break away and Arya leaves his office, but she finds a note on his whiteboard, uh, which says that A has seen everything. And there's another note on the bottom, which warns her that one of um, her friends has killed Alison. Again, the jail list is expanding and we've got Ezra on the list 
again. Spencer kind of can't stop thinking about the argument that she had with Alison the night that she went missing. She decides to reach out and ask her mother if she had ever experienced temporary amnesia. Her her mum's quite reluctant to share the information with her, but her mum does confirm that she did experience some of that in the past. So she says, when she was seven, Spencer, her mother, and Melissa were victims of an armed robbery outside a museum. When they got home that night, Spencer developed a high fever. She was tested for spinal meningitis, but it turned up negative. She woke up from the fever a week later, but had no memory of the robbery. Her parents took extra precautions for the rest of the summer, afraid Spencer would relapse. It meant that Melissa had to miss out on several important events her mother had planned to attend with her. Spencer is petrified that this may not have been the only time she'd forgotten something, and she may have forgotten something to do with Alison. So therefore, therefore, this kind of con- confirms the thing that the therapist was saying that Melissa was probably jealous because of this situation that had happened. But Lucas takes Hannah on a hot air balloon ride ki- type of thing. And they both kind of share their own life experiences. Lucas tells her about uh, his brother who tried to commit S word. And then Hannah tells her about her bulimia and the notes that she has been getting from A. She also mentions that Mona had become friends with her when they tried to turn themselves into versions of Alison. And Lucas says that he's really glad that Hannah is not Alison um, because he had gone through experiences with Alison that were really, really bad. Alison spread rumors in middle school that he was a hermaphrite. And that's when his reputation went from being cool to being a dork. Um, Lucas asked Hannah to hang out with him on the night of Mona's party since uh, he hasn't been invited and she has been uninvited. But Spencer and Melissa hang out in the hot tub and Spencer confesses that you know, she probably shouldn't have gone for uh, Melissa's ex boy, uh, previous boyfriends. Of obviously, Spencer, come on now. Are we only just realizing this? Melissa says that she she's worried that Ian has been unfaithful to her in the past before, and that uh, she's gonna get the girl who, you know, is being unfaithful with Ian. And Spencer's like, oh, what are you gonna do to the girl? But Melissa's like, I already have done something to the girl. So then A sends Melissa the opening paragraph to Spencer's essay. And this is when Melissa finds out that Spencer had stolen her essay. Arya decides not to go to Sean's party and instead she uh, goes to Ezra's place and they end up drinking and they end up making out. So guess again guys the jail list ezra's on it again are we surprised make some noise if you're surprised okay hannah receives a package from mona so she suspects that mona and uh wants her and Hannah to kind of make peace. So inside is a dress that Mona chose for her special birthday court to wear. Hannah texts Lucas to tell him that the evening together is off and wears the dress. Mona is appalled when she sees Hannah at the party. She's wearing the same dress, but it fits her perfectly. Hannah trips and the dress rips. She sees her picture displayed on a giant television screen as she tries to leave. She's grateful when Lucas appears and gives her a jacket to wear before escorting her out of the ballroom. He takes her to a reading room at a nearby college so she can change into some old clothes from his car. Hannah wonders why he was at Mona's party and he explains he'd actually been invited but had told Hannah he wasn't so she wouldn't feel bad. Why is he so nice? Uh, The two of them actually then end up making out on one of the couches until a professor kind of interrupts them. But Lucas takes her back to the party so she can get in her car. As she drives home, she receives a text from A. This time, however, get this. A didn't use a private number and A used a number that Hannah 
recognizes. Emily goes ice skating with Becca and her friend, Wendy. Emily's uncomfortable with the obvious history the two have and with the memories it brings up of her feelings for Alison. Before the night is over, Emily discovers Becca and Wendy making out. Becca admits that she thought treetops worked, but seeing Wendy again brought back all her old feelings. Emily asks if they can drop her off at Mona's party. Emily hopes Maya will be there and they can get back together. She is thrilled when her plans work out and Maya forgives her. The two of them sit outside holding hands, confirming their love for each other. Emily's mum arrives after receiving a text uh, and then she drags Emily home. Her bags are packed and she will be living with her aunt in Iowa in the morning. Wow, Emily is like going through it completely. Like Aria has a dream about a video she made with Alison and her friends. In the dream, Alison tells her to look closely to the tape to find the answers to who killed her. When the dream, Alison gets angry because Aria doesn't understand. Aria wakes up. She finds herself in Ezra's bed and he confronts her with kisses. They talk about moving out of the country together. And as Aria starts to doze off, the police break into Ezra's apartment and they arrest Ezra. Now, why do they arrest Ezra? Sean received a text from A regarding the relationship and he decided to tell the police about it. So Ezra, everybody cheers, got arrested. Finally, this should have happened in the TV show. Why not happen in the TV show? I would have been there, I would have been sat, I would have been present, front row, a barrier. I would have been on Ticketmaster that very morning, yeah, if this happened in the show. Sean then kicks Arya out of, out of his house and tells her that she's not welcome there anymore. So her, Arya heads to a diner. So she calls her mom asking if she can go stay with her mom, but her mom says no. She then asks her dad, but her dad also says no. So instead she goes to reviewing the video because the dream Allison told her to do it. The waitress at the diner comments on how sad it is uh, on the news uh, which is talking about Alison and her friends, but never mentions her boyfriend. At first, Arya is confused, but when she examines the video again in slow motion, she sees that Ian and Alison touch hands several times. Arya knows that Spencer had a crush on Ian, and that information, along with A's clues, lead her to believe that Spencer killed Alison out of jealousy. She calls Emily to tell her, but Emily doesn't want to talk about it. When Hannah calls at the same time, Emily puts her through so they can talk about it all together. The connection is terrible, but Hannah tells them to meet her at the usual spot at the playground because she knows who A is. We're getting into the real depths of it now, everybody. Once again, Ezra is in jail, but actually for real this time. Like, it's no joke. He's actually in jail. Clap if you care. Ian is also on the jail list because he's had an underage relationship with Alison and now Spencer as well. So Spencer kind of has another little moment going back to the night Alison disappeared. She sees everything that happened. Alison thought Spencer had read her diary. Spencer denied it. They also thought about Ian. And eventually Alison made Spencer so angry that she pushed Alison into a stone wall. Alison hit her head and fell unconscious. Uh, Spencer wakes up and she's locked in her room and she like bangs on it to get out and her dad's like this is the best thing for you. Hannah is driving to the playground and she convinced she she knows who A is because A had texted her from A's usual number and not like a different number. So Hannah arrives at the the playground and she sees the SU suv but she sees aria hanging from it because aria is screaming at her warning her to watch out and why is that everybody a hits hannah with a car not at hit runs over so then they all receive a text from a being like she knew too much <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. Then we move on to the fourth book in the arc, which is the final book in this arc, which is called Unbelievable. This book opens up with Spencer being really excited to tell the girls that this is a flashback, by the way, that they can use the barn for the slumber party. She's really, really excited uh, by it. But before she can say anything, Jessica De Laurentiis Allison's mom says that she needs to talk to Allison and Spencer felt some tension and that maybe something had happened but 
nonetheless Alison is really excited that they'll get to spend the night in the barn she talks to Melissa and Ian because they are going to Prague uh and uh Alison asks Melissa if Ian is going with her and Melissa's like yeah and Spencer gets really annoyed at Alison because she thinks that Alison is purposefully trying to spill the fact that her and Ian have a thing so once again on the jail list Ian is very much there again are we shocked everybody then we come back to present day and aria wakes up in a hospital because uh hannah had obviously been hit by a car so a doctor comes out and tells hannah's parents that she has a broken arm some internal injuries and she's in a coma and they don't know the full extent of the brain injuries that may come with what happened so aria believes she knows who killed allison so she actually re uh, reaches out to Wilden. So she asks Wilden if she can talk to him away from the others. Wilden is not only dating Hannah's mother, but he's also investigating Alison's murder. Before Arya can voice her suspicions, Wilden tells her that the police aren't going to press any charges against Ezra. It's good to see that the police in Rosewood are just as useless in the books as they are in the TV show. I love it. I love the consistency. I really do. Wilden warns her that Arya should tell her parents about it, but uh, Arya begs him not to. I don't really understand this bit because I feel like when police are dealing with a minor, I feel like you have to tell the parents about it. No. Or like, is it different rules? Like, I don't really know. Anyway, so she tells Officer Wilden her, her suspicions that Spencer killed Allison. Arya figured out that Allison had been uh, secretly dating Ian, the boy who Spencer had a crush on. So Arya admits Spencer and Allison got into a huge fight the night of the sleepover. They left the barn and Spencer didn't come back for more than 10 minutes. Allison disappeared that night. So Officer Wilden convinces Arya that Spencer couldn't have done the murder because she would have had to drag Allison's body across the lawn to the hole in Allison's backyard. A young girl in seventh grade would not have been able to have the strength to do that and then return to her friends without appearing tired or upset. However, Wilden is intrigued to discover that Ian was dating Allison at that time, which would give Melissa a motive for potentially killing Allison. Byron appears at the hospital after he's seen everything on the news and he offers Arya a place to stay because she's been kicked out by her mother. Spencer's kind of going through it. She's kind of losing her mind a bit because the girls aren't really replying to her. I mean, she keeps having these kind of dreams about the night that Allison went missing. Her mum tells her and Melissa that the girls won't be seeing their therapist anymore and also tells the girls not to tell anyone about the whole Golden Orchids situation and, and that they're just gonna keep it under hush. Emily at this point has been sent to go and live with her aunt in Iowa because she has continued her relationship with Mona. Uh, Mona? Maya maya she shares a room with her cousin abby and although abby pretends to be a willing follower of her parents beliefs she surprises emily by asking if she wants to sneak out with her two older brothers after the parents go to sleep they take her to a party and abandoned warehouse and all the kids drink and dance Emily meets Trista, who is a beautiful blonde uh, girl who flirts with her. Emily finds herself very attractive to Trista, but wonders how she could so easily forget about Maya. For the first time since she arrived, she's glad to be in Iowa. There's no hope that A will be able to spy on her and send her some texts. Ezra gets fired and he actually goes to move to Rhode Island. Uh, Arya kind of is really devastated by that, but I... I am secretly cheering inside. Not even secretly. I will cheer out loud. So Arya says that she wants to move with him, but Ezra's like, you should maybe in a few years think about it. And he gives her a Shakespeare, like, bobblehead type of thing. Arya kind of has to sleep in kind of like a very, very spare room because there's no space. And she's very against the Meredith and Byron relationship, but uh, Meredith is like, we're going to stay together. So whether you like it or not, we're staying together. Do you know what I mean? Melissa and Spencer kind of have a bit of a moment. that uh, They've gone away with their family, um, and, but they end up drinking. And Spencer confides in Melissa and says that she once kissed Ian in the driveway. But Melissa says that she knew about it. Uh, Melissa claims she knew that Ian had kissed her and she also knew about Alison and Ian's affair. 
Spencer then tells Melissa about the argument she and Allison had and how she's afraid that she'd killed Allison. Melissa tells her not to worry. It takes a unique person to kill and Spencer is not unique. <laughs> As she says this, Melissa rips the head off a doll that looks exactly like Allison. Uh, we've kind of skipped the jail list a little bit, but I think since we last came back to this list, I've added Ezra again. I've added Byron and Ian again. So the list, the list is getting very much longer. Arya arrives at Hannah's hospital room the following Monday to find Lucas already there reading a magazine. Lucas tells Arya th that there's been no real change in Hannah's condition, but she showed signs of trying to wake up during the night. Spencer arrives and Lucas kind of leaves the room. And at first, Arya is convinced that Spencer is um, A. However... Um, once they talk about it and talk out loud, Arya kind of comes to, to the conclusion that she's not A. And she, I, she's very shocked to find out that Melissa knew about Alison and Ian and Spencer and Ian. Arya kind of comes to the conclusion that Melissa also fits the clues that A had sent them about, about Alison's killer. But she doesn't really say anything to Spencer. As they're kind of standing by Hannah's bedside, Arya thinks that someone's spying on them but doesn't know who and kind of shrugs it off a little bit. Emily's aunt and uncle find out about the teen's party. When they question their children, uh, Emily's cousins blame it on Emily and say Emily is the one that kind of started it all. So Emily's aunt and uncle call Emily's parents to say that they're sending her back to Rosewood. Arya decides to take an art class and there's a session in the class where they two students hold each other's hands eyes closed and have to picture what the face of the person looks like and Arya is really shocked when she opens her eyes and she finds out that it's actually Jenna then there's kind of a scene kind of like in the tv show when Hannah has a dream in the hospital with Allison I think it was actually Allison she uh, Hannah is warning Allison not to go to the sleepover because she will be killed um but ha uh Allison is like I'm not dead Come on now. I know you want to kiss me. The dream feels really, really real to Hannah. And Alison grabs her hand and tells her that nothing is as it seems. Um, and that's when she wakes up. She's in the presence of her family. She doesn't really remember the hit and run. She wakes up with amnesia. So she doesn't really remember what exactly had happened. Emily hitches a ride to the bus station and buys the first ticket out of Iowa. Um, unfortunately, it's to Akron, Ohio. She doesn't know anyone in Ohio, so she finds herself sitting at a diner across from the terminal, trying to decide what to do next. A news story on the TV explains that Hannah had woken up from her coma, and it goes to flash a picture of Emily. The reporter explains that another friend of Allison was discovered missing from her relative's home this morning. So Emily is kind of missing right now on the news emily's parents appear they tell the cameras they love emily and plead with her to come back emily hurries to the bus station and buys a ticket home mona is quite reluctant to share with hannah what actually happened the night of her party because mona was really mean to her and she doesn't want uh hannah knowing that however there's another reason why but we will get to that towards the end of this book spencer's stolen essay makes it to the final of the golden orchid competition and wilden interviews melissa asking more about what happened with ian and allison but she's shocked to learn that melissa doesn't tell him about the argument that uh, spencer and allison had had uh, she's shocked that she's kind of being protected by Melissa and then Spencer kind of comes to like the the theory did Melissa kill Allison type of thing Emily's mom picks her up although Emily's mom doesn't agree with the lifestyle she she figures that obviously her daughter is more important and she just decides to live with kind of Emily's choices so Emily then goes to see Hannah in hospital and they're trying to get her to remember who A is because she obviously knows who A was before, but she's got amnesia. So she doesn't really know who it is anymore. But they actually discover that uh, A has written on Hannah's cast. Similar to kind of the TV show, A signs it off by saying kisses A. But Mona asks Spencer if... Uh, she wants to help with Hannah's welcome welcoming home party. Um, Spencer kind of admires Mona and says how she admires 
you know who she is now and obviously Alison used to bully her for her looks but she's kind of overcome that um and then Mona confides in Spencer by saying she's been getting texts from A but Lucas then tells Hannah uh that Mona needs to tell her about a fight that they had the night that she got run over and Mona tries to to, to deflect this uh, but then she ends up confessing that they did actually have a fight. Spoiler, I'll just say it now. Mona is A. So she obviously doesn't want Hannah to kind of remember her being A. But then Lucas, when Mona goes, kind of tells Hannah that you can't trust Mona. Arya finds herself again in the art class with Jenna and they have to make masks of each other's faces. Arya starts to kind of open up a little bit about A towards jenna but a kind of threatens her not to say anything and then a also tells her that meredith is working at hooters so maya confronts emily kind of asking her what happened in iowa emily doesn't want to say because she's fallen in love with a new person called trista but maya gushes because they've been awarded best couple in the yearbook and they have a photo shoot for it the the later day emily receives a text from trista but she hides it from maya because she doesn't want maya to know but mona and the liars of reunite for hannah's kind of get together because she's home now mona confides in the girls and spencer tells her about mona getting text messages as well and hannah asks mona about the fight that they had but mona's like it doesn't matter now and spencer kind of backs us up by saying a just wants them to kind of be apart and kind of go against each other so they should just all just leave it and carry on maya gets invited to a family meal at emily's house and emily's quite shocked at this but throughout the entire meal emily's quite uncomfortable and she gets a text from trista and she she tries to hide it from maya maya kind of confronts emily being like why are you acting really really weird what's going on maya assumes that hannah's accident just is getting to emily a bit more um so uh maya leaves she um, emily finds a note in her bag from a saying to keep quiet but she also finds uh that the letter kind of smells of the gum that maya uh eats so spencer and her parents along with melissa and ian spend the night in new york city before the interview with the golden orchid community uh, committee spencer can't get the image of melissa ripping the head off the barbie doll out of her head she's also very nervous about the interview she retires to the suite her parents have for her she tries to relax but she finds it difficult about an hour later she hears a knock on the door um it turns out to be ian melissa has passed out after drinking and ian wants to know if spencer wants to go for a walk so instead they sit on her bed and talk spencer asks him about ali but ian insists they weren't dating that they only hooked up in a, cu a couple of times he claims he preferred kissing spencer he wonders why she and melissa were obsessed with the night allison disappeared spencer wonders why melissa is so concerned about it ian leaves in seductively and tells spencer they should stop talking about the past and make out instead spencer tries to talk him out of it even though she enjoys the attention Men melissa knocks on the door ian makes a quick getaway in the main hallway and melissa comes in to spencer's suite once again ian is back on the jail list again he is giving ren and ezra a run for their money absolutely with the golden orchid community committee sorry interview it goes quite well however spencer get a, gets a message beforehand saying that the judges can see that she's fake and also kind of hints the fact that melissa might have killed allison so throughout the rest of the interview she stumbles through it quite a lot because obviously her brain is quite distracted by it maya and emily are taking pictures for the yearbook but emily's quite not really feeling it that much she also sees a picture of allison so she gets quite overwhelmed by the whole situation she also has a point where she fears that maya is a she gets a text from a uh warning her that she will tell my that a will tell maya about the trista crush situation but then maya is already gone by the time she kind of gets the message so she kind of suspects further that maya is a but then trista ends up walking into the room trista hopped on a plane with her father's um frequent flyer miles and wanted to surprise emily she hopes to attend the masquerade party with emily that emily had told her about aria takes mike to hooters to go and confront uh meredith themselves however when they get there aria kind of breaks down and confesses to her about all the texts that she's got from a and mike is like girl you need to go to the police finally someone is speaking sense lucas is still trying to convince 
Hannah that Mona is not a good friend, but Hannah's not really having it. So Hannah gets a bit suspicious because Hannah's like, why is there, like, why is there tension? between the two mona claims it's the fact that she and lucas dated for summer between seventh and eighth grade mona says she never told hannah because lucas is a loser and she didn't want hannah to think she was a loser too mona thinks he's trying to drive a wedge between them to get revenge so when hannah then confronts lucas he denies that he was ever serious about mona and the three continue to fight about this whole situation hannah gets a memory back about the night of mona's party and remembers that mona was trying to humiliate her humiliate 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 her emily and trista arrive at hannah's party Uh, emily told maya that she and trista were pen pals that that happened to meet up again in iowa when maya finds them at the party she kisses emily possessively in front of trista Trista acts like a kid at a candy store as she admires all the cute guys and the girls' as jewellery. Maya leaves the bathroom and in her absence, Trista and Emily begin to kiss. Maya returns, upset at what she's seen uh, and runs away. Emily runs after her, but she is then approached by a police officer who tells her Arya has made a statement and he wonders if Emily has been receiving threatening text messages as well the maya emily relationship is very different in the books compared to the tv show tv show i really am convinced they were end game but obviously in the books it's it's a whole lot different so emily catches up to maya and asks her if she is the one that's been sending threatening messages but maya is like i don't know what you mean so then maya kind of runs away from the situation and it Emily gets a text from A saying to go to the hot tub and in the hot tub there's a mermaid who's like floating and has like drowned with like threatening messages on it to keep Emily quiet. Then Emily sees Trista bring a boy into a room and they end up making out so Emily is just the whole night went terribly. So Arya actually ends up losing her phone so she goes to the art place where she was before with the whole Jenna thing and she ends up actually passing out in front of jenna because she has a panic attack on the spot spencer's having fun at hannah's party and until she hears uh melissa's voice she's like why would melissa be at a teen's party they kind of have a confrontation here and there melissa corners her in the bathroom and asks why spencer lied to her again ian told her he was in spencer's hotel room spencer swears that nothing happened between them melissa stumps away and mona comes out of another bathroom store she offers to wait for spencer outside as spencer looks for the aspirin for her purse she comes across an old picture of alice and ian standing next to each other with their arms entwined a curse word and a threat on ali's life are sprawled across alison's face and the handwriting is melissa's so then aria wakes up and jenna is like calm down you had a panic attack everything's fine and they end up having actually a really nice conversation and jenna thanks them for kind of getting toby out of uh her life and she's actually really thankful that although obviously she went blind in in the jenna thing she's glad that toby was kind of out out of her life for good jenna also mentions that someone else saw the firework situation too but they actually don't jenna doesn't say who who saw it but she knows that someone else had had seen what had happened the girls meet up and spencer shows them the picture with melissa's writing on it and they actually then go to wilden and tell them about what's been happening with a the others warn her that it might not actually be melissa and it might be another one of a's games to kind of set them up kind of like they did uh like a did with toby aria then goes to the party and tells them all what jenna had said and hannah's memory actually gets kind of like it comes back and hannah remembers who a actually is the phone number that a had accidentally texted hannah from was actually mona's mona was a so at this point mona and spencer are in a car very similar to kind of the the show's reveal and mona reveals herself as a so spencer begins to have second thoughts with melissa being a and killing allison but mona convinces her to turn melissa in for murder spencer receives a text from emily warning her that mona is a before spencer can escape from the car mona realizes that spencer finally knows her secret hannah ari and emily go to the police and goes to wilden and Beeler and explains the whole situation and says that spencer is in trouble wilden ends up calling spencer 
and gets the location of where they are. However, Mona throws Spencer's phone out of the car and changes direction of the car so they head to a different direction. She takes Spencer to an abandoned quarry and there she explains how she and Jenna had been friends. Mona had seen everything the night of the bottle rocket incident, even receiving burns on her stomach herself. Toby confessed to the crime so fast that no one, not even her parents, would believe Mona when she tried to tell them Alison did it. Even Jenna wouldn't admit that Alison was at fault. Mona and Jenna stopped being friends and Mona became obsessed with getting revenge for her scars. She found her chance when she discovered Alison's diary among the stuff Maya's family was throwing out of the dealer renter's house. Alison had recorded uh, all of the girls' secrets. Mona can't explain how the cops never found Alison's diary and gloats over making Spencer and her friends squirm with her texts. Long story short, um, Mona and Spencer have a little bit of a fight and uh spencer falls unconscious and mona actually falls kind of off a cliff and she actually ends up dying so mona is dead now um obviously compared to the books uh mona stays alive throughout the entire tv show but compared to the books mona actually does die at this stage so the death list so far we have allison toby and mona ian then after this gets arrested for Allison's murder and the girls watch as this happens but Melissa finally admits that she and Ian had been drinking the night Allison disappeared Melissa had passed out and when she woke up Ian wasn't there but he was back in the morning the next day Melissa left for Prague when she returned she was too scared to admit the truth Hannah's mom gets a job in Singapore and moves out and she has an option to either move in with her dad or go to a boarding school so the liars all gather at the courthouse to hear ian's kind of plea but first they dump all of the gifts a had sent them into a garbage bag to keep to give to officer wilden the only thing emily keeps back is the original love letter that she sent to allison the girls then sit together in the courtroom and listen as ian pleads guilty to allison's murder as they hug outside of the courtroom emily actually sees some eyes looking back at her and she is convinced that they are allison's but before the girls can see the car then drives away so that is it for the first arc of the pretty little liars books timeline i would love to hear your opinion down below on different aspects of the timeline that are potentially different to the show yeah let me know your thoughts down below make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys